Here are some more examples of Lehopital's rule. Okay, Lehopital's rule, recall, we're going to take limit of a function f over g as x goes to c. We're going to get a 0 over 0 or a plus minus infinity over a plus minus infinity coming out. That means we need to do more work. So Lehopital suggests trying limit x goes to c of f prime over g prime. We get a number out of that or plus minus infinity then that's going to be equal to our original limit. So let's look at some more exercises. So let's try an infinite limit in this case. So we're going to go out to plus infinity for our natural log of x over x. Now, x will go out to plus infinity for sure. Natural log of x, well here, let's take a look at the graph. So the graph of natural log of x goes like this. We have our vertical asymptote, and then it just goes up. So as I go out to infinity, the y values are going to go off to infinity in that direction. So we're going to have an infinity over infinity, which is one of our indeterminate forms. So the Hopital's rule will apply. Take the derivative of the top over the derivative of the bottom. We get a 1 over x over 1. That just turns to 1 over x. If I take the limit as we go to infinity, limit of 1 over x goes to 0. I have a number, so that's going to be my original limit. Let's try 1 plus x minus e to the x over x squared. Limit as x goes to 0. So when we do power series, we'll see that this is just using the power series of e to the x to cook up problems. But that's something for later on. So for now, let's just see what we have here. I put my 0 in, so I get 1 plus 0 minus e to the 0. e to the 0 is 1, so we have a 0 on top. 0 on the bottom gives me a 0 out. So we can try Lehopital's rule. Take the derivative of the top. It's going to be 1 minus derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And then I have bottom is 2x. We put 0 in, and we get 1 minus 1 over 0. So Again, it's an indeterminate form, but Lehopital's rule now applies to this one. So we're allowed to use Lehopital's rule as many times as we want, as long as indeterminate forms keep coming out. I do the derivative of this. We're going to get minus e to the x goes to e to the x. 2x goes to 2. I put my 0 in, and out comes minus a half. Since that limit turns out to be a number, that's going to be our original limit. Let's apply Lehopital to a case where we have a one-sided limit. So we consider inverse sine minus pi halves over x minus 1 as x goes to 1 from the left. Now notice this is how we compute the derivative of inverse sine at x equals 1. And that's just going to be the slope of the tangent line at x equals 1. If I draw the graph of inverse sine, Notice, if I take the tangent line at 1, it's going to be a vertical line. So its slope is going to be infinite. If you take a look at all the tangent lines leading up to it, they're all going to be increasing, so they're all positive. So expect that the slope, when I compute this, is going to be plus infinity. Let's take a look at what Lehopital says. So first, I'm going to put a 1 into this and see what comes out. In the bottom, we're definitely getting a 0. In the top, I write sine inverse of 1 equals theta. We rewrite that as sine of theta equals 1. But sine is just the y value in the unit circle. So I draw on a horizontal line at y equals 1. And that hits the unit circle in one spot at the angle pi halves. So we're looking at pi halves minus pi halves up top. And so I'm going to get 0 over 0. So the Hopital applies. Now, Take the derivative of the top over the bottom. Derivative of the bottom is 1. Derivative of the top, we have that stored somewhere. That's just 1 over radical 1 minus x squared. And then we just push everything as it is moving the radical to the bottom. Now, this limit, let's note, if I put a 1 in here, I'm going to get 1 over 0. That's not an indeterminate form. That's going to be the case of either a plus infinity, minus infinity, or it does not exist. 
So I'll need to go to the graph just to get a better idea of what happens. To graph this, notice that I have vertical asymptotes at plus or minus one. So I'll draw those in. And then if I put a zero in here, I'm gonna get a one. Finally, if I take a radical of anything, if it makes sense to take the radical of it, it always returns a positive number. So this thing is always above the x-axis. So just connecting all those facts together, we're getting something that looks just like this. So as I take the limit for this function as we go to one from the left, so we're going this way. As I go this way, the y values are shooting up. So I'm going to expect that we go to plus infinity. And that agrees with our guess by looking at the graph.